first thing we're gonna do is prepare the table war tray and pay attention to these grooves here in the tray this is exactly where the tin sheet is gonna lie Glue is then applied to the inside of that groove. Then insert the sheet into the tray making sure it lays inside the grooves. It's also a good idea to put weight on the sheet until the glue's dry. Once the glue's dry it's time to get out your washers. Now we'll dry fit these washers and figure out exactly how we want to place and arrange them. Once you have something that you like, it's time to glue everything in place. If you have a bigger tray or you're using the discs for a diorama or display board, it might help to use a sharpie to mark the outlines of the rings so you know exactly where to place them. Once the glue is dry, take masking tape and mask off the rings. Then take a razor and cut around the outside of the rings. Then use craft sticks to apply drywall compound to the gaps. Once all the gaps are filled, use a scraper to level it all out. When the drywall compound is completely dry, then it's adding all the little details and bits to the base. Here I'm just using the cheapest tile you can find from a DIY store like Home Depot or Lowe's and using a hot glue gun to place it. You can also see that I have bases that I'm gonna be using in here also on there so that I could add materials to them, make it blend in with the rest of the diorama. And you can use any bits you have. This is just kind of what I had laying around and this is a personal part of the project for you to make it fit your theme. After all my bits are in place, I use a Vallejo texture paste to fill all the gaps and that'll hide any of the hot glue that seeped out, it'll hide any seams that are where the dry compound and the washers meet together and it also creates a base for us to put more stuff on top like rocks and static grass. And while the texture paste is still wet, this is the time to add any details that you want, like pebbles. Uh, I add pebbles, bricks from Pegasus Hobbies, and then I put gravel over the top of it. And that was just because after I put the texture paste on, it looked kind of plain. So I figured, hey, we'll throw everything but the kitchen sink at it. Texture paste doesn't always hold everything in place, so after everything was dry, I went over all those little bits that I added, the rocks, the bricks, anything else that looked loose with a mixture that is Elmer's glue, regular PVA glue mixed with uh, 
first aid alcohol, like 70% isopropyl, I believe. And that's what makes it turn almost clear. And this stuff grabs really good. The alcohol helps it to sink in a lot better than mixing it with water, things like that. So this is just in preparation for paint. We don't want anything falling off. And once everything's dry, we're ready for paint. And this is the time if you had any gravel that fell into the inside of the washers to clean that up. Use a tool here to kind of scrape out some gravel that might give the uh, bases a hard time sitting in there level. And it's just base coating. And go over multiple times if you have to. And this is another thing. This is personal up to you to figure out what colors you want to do. I'm just showing you the process so that you can kind of figure out exactly how it's done and how I do it and then modify it to your liking. Now I just add the first layer of highlighting here and I'm just hitting the edges of the base. I have no idea where the models are going to be placed on it so I just figure hey most of the lights probably going to be hitting the edge because the model is going to be centered and this is where you just pick out details. And then going in with another lighter color, it's just refining that highlight. And then you could throw a wash on after this, put some pigments in there. And then once you varnish over it after all that, you're good to go. Use a sponge and some rusty colors, rust up some of that metal. And this is what you get. <laughs> 